welcome back to my channel. I am Benjamin Crudwig, and this is Benjamin Crudwig Fiber Arts and Textiles and Fashion Design. So, this is part three of the Vipers and the Ivy suiting, fantasy suiting project. I, in the last episode, created this amazing sample. This is the tensile fabric that I wove and then did this dragon scale smocking technique to create this nice heavy duty piece here. I absolutely love how it turned out and I am super, super excited to see the finished pieces that will end up going into the actual suit itself. But now is the time to finally get the loom set up for the wool fabric. This is the main fabric that is going to be used on the actual suit itself. This is the main body fabric. For this main fantasy fabric, uh, for the actual suit itself, I'm going to be revisiting a fabric that I made many, many years ago. What I did then was I created out of cotton a kind of a dragon scale fabric. You can see it here. This is in a light gray and a white mercerized cotton. And I'm going to recreate that fabric for this suit. I want to echo the same kind of scales here in the actual fabric itself for the suit. I am very, very excited for this. However, I had somehow lost the weaving draft that I used for that other fabric. And I had to completely refigure it out and go back and basically reverse engineer this fabric. So I did have a little bit of a vacation over the last six days. Um, I guess mid-September uh, when you see this, probably in October. And I, through some trial and error, finally <laughs> re-figured out my weaving draft for that pattern. So now that I've done that, that was my big mental block before getting this fabric started on my loom. So now I'm able to go ahead and start warping my loom, measuring my warp before I do that, and threading my loom up. So I've already started measuring my warp because I've already gotten through um, a lot of the, the math that I'll go over in just a second. But just as a quick reminder, the two fabrics or two yarns I'm using for this fabric is a 224 weight wool. It's this Jagerspun um, Superman, which is actually being discontinued, <laughs> I learned. So I'm glad that I got two full cones of each color in Loden, which is this kind of heathered green, and Carbon, which is a dark gray or black even. Um, it's kind of both, but there's a nice high contrast here, which I think will look really, really good in the final fabric. Now, with this fabric and with this yarn, I had to figure out what my set was going to be, S-E-T-T. -T. So your set is how you're going to slay your read. It is how many threads per inch or ends per inch, which is E-P-I. And to figure that out, you use a very, pretty simple uh, equation. What you do is you, fi you figure out what your wraps per inch are. So for this yarn, I found that my wraps per inch were 46. So 46 wraps per inch on just like a ruler. And for a plain weave, a balanced plain weave, you would divide that by two. So that gives me about 23 ends per inch. However, my weave structure is actually a 2-2 twill. It's a point twill, um, but it's still a, roughly about a 2-2 twill. And what that means is that you have, in most places on the fabric, you have two threads crossing over two threads, and that's a different set than a balanced plain weave. So it's actually about two-thirds of your set, um, or two-thirds of your wraps per inch, to get your set for a 2-2 two, two twill. So doing that math, I have 30 ends per inch, which um, 
should be should be pretty nice. <laughs> uh, I need to make sure that I have the right read set up, um, but I'll get to that when I get to that stage. I am going to be using my entire weaving width and on my loom, which is just kind of out of frame here, uh, I'm using a Shacked Baby Wolf 8 harness loom and that has a 26 inch weaving width. Now, 30 ends per inch times 26 inches equals um, about, let's see, where do I have this? Uh, 780 ends total. Now remember, I have 100 heddles on each harness, so I have 800 heddles, which means I'm only going to have 20 free heddles <laughs> at the end of getting my loom set up, which is absolutely wild to me. I don't think I've ever used that many heddles on a project, but I will be in this one. So with 780 ends, I wanted to do a 14 yard warp. That way I have plenty of fabric to make this suit out of and maybe even some left over to play with later. So 780 ends times 14 yards um, is 10,920 yards, which is wild. Um, with two cones of this yarn, um, each cone has 5,960 yards on it. Multiply that by two and that's 11,920 yards. So I'm going to have approximately 1,000 yards left over which will be great because it'll allow me to fix any um, broken warp threads that I might have. And after already measuring 200 ends of this, I know I'm going to have some broken wef or warp yarns. Um, unfortunately, I have clothing moths in my apartment and um, some of them have chewed up some of my yarn, some of my wools. Um, it sucks. It absolutely sucks. I'm not going to sugarcoat it. So this cone has been kind of left out to the, their devices and uh, it's a bummer because there are some weak spots in this yarn, meaning I'm probably going to have a few broken warp threads. I've already had to tie this yarn together a few times. So I'm going to have plenty of extra just in case that happens, but um, the good news is the other cone of this yarn has been completely sealed up in plastic, so it shouldn't have any issues. <sighs> I know, I know. Hindsight is twenty twenty. I should have learned my lesson before, should have put it away at the first signs of clothing moths, but I didn't. Whatever. It's fine. It's absolutely fine. So I'm going to go ahead and start moving along in this process. I'll show you here. This is... 200 ends in a warp chain here. I'm going to do another set of 200 ends and then one after that um, I'll do 180 ends and actually probably 186 because I'm going to do floating selvages on each side. Um, that'll be a bundle of three ends on each side. So I'm going to go ahead and start measuring my next bit of warp and uh, I'll bring you over to my warping board and you'll get to see me start measuring again. See you there. Hello, this is my warping board. <laughs> so this is a shacked 14 yard warping board and I'm going to be using the full 14 yards. Now to start, all I do is create a little slip knot here, a little loop I don't think you can even see it, it's so fine. And I will be putting that on the first peg up in the top left. When warping, there is a very specific pattern that you need to follow. And what you do is you're on this first peg, you go over the second peg, under the third peg, over the fourth and around. And you go back and forth around each peg like so and depending on the length of warp that you're using 
um, you would stop at one of these pegs and turn around. But I am using the full 14 yards, so I'm going to come around to this last peg here, turn the corner, and go back the way I came. Just like so. And when I come back around the top, I'm going to go over the fourth peg, over the third peg, under the second peg, and then under the first peg, and back around. So that was one full repeat, which gives me two ends of my warp. So I'm going to go ahead and repeat that whole process 100 more times. Um, and I'm actually going to show you what I do to keep my brain sane, <laughs> which um, if you're doing a really wide warp with a lot of warp ends, you're going to want to do this technique. So I'm going to go ahead and do eight more ends, and then I'll show you my little trick. So that was 10 ends, and what I'm going to do is take a contrasting piece of thread, and this is actually left over from one of my previous projects. It's an orange tencel. It's nice and strong, and the best part is that it contrasts against this green color. So up here on this like first straight row, I am going to do a half hitch around that bundle of 10. And what I'm going to do on subsequent rows is do another half hitch with this yarn, bundling another group of 10. Once I have 10 groups of 10, I'll bundle that whole group together and start over on the next group of 10. What that does is it allows me to immediately count pretty easily how many threads or ends I've done. So, <laughs> That means I'm not counting each individual group of threads, or sorry, each individual thread itself to determine how many threads I have for my warp. So what does that mean? I can breathe easier. I don't have to be worrying so much about counting each pass. I only have to count up to 10. And guess what? I can do that really easily. <laughs> so. Then once I have 10 groups of 10, that means that's one group of 100, then I can move on to the next bundle of 100, and I'll stop measuring this group of the warp once I have two groups of 100, or 200 ends. Then on the final bundle of the warp chain, I'm going to do one bundle of 100, and then a bundle of 86 about, um, to make sure that I have enough for the floating selvages on the edges of my warp. I'm gonna go ahead and measure this off camera. You've seen me do plenty of warp measuring. It's not particularly interesting. So I'll come back to you once I have all three warp chains and take you through a little bit more of the process of what this project is going to look like. Here we are at the loom. <laughs> Um, yeah, so I finished measuring my warp. You can see my warp chains going down across my floor. Coming up here where I've kept the cross with my leaf sticks. And I'm going to go ahead and start slaying my reed. And this reed is a tendent reed. So that means I'm going to be able to put three ends per slot. So that's going to be really, really helpful. And then I'm going to have to move some heddles um, because the first harness and the eighth harness actually use half as many heddles as the other six harnesses um, with this tie up. Um, so I'm going to have to move about half of the heddles from number one and number eight and spread them evenly across the other six. So. That's 100 over six. So, crikey. 
like 15, 16 around there, I think. I don't know. <laughs> I will do the math later. But uh, once I get um, this slayed, then I'll do that. From there, then I'll thread my warp through the heddles and then wind on the warp. So, oh, and there's beans. So, hey, the beans. Hey, beans. She's keeping an eye on me as I work. has been slayed. Uh, <laughs> so I don't know if I've already mentioned this. Uh, I'll find out when I do the editing for this video, but I did my math wrong when I was warping, uh, measuring my warp, even though I did my math right when I was doing stuff earlier. I had neglected to measure off 200 ends, and I was wondering why I had so much yarn left over before. So the whole read has been slayed now. I am super, super happy for that. There's three ends per little slot here. Um, so we have our 30 ends per inch. And then what I need to do is take harness one and harness eight, remove 50 heddles off of it, and then off of each, and evenly distribute the 100 heddles onto the other six. So I've gotta do some math there to do that right. Um, yeah, it's it's going. Uh, I'm hoping to do that real quick. That means I need to take off all the stuff from here to remove the tray, and then I can pull those other harnesses out. It's a little bit more work than I would like, but I need all of the heddles that I can get. I only have 20 extra heddles in this project, so um, yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna go ahead and do that work, and then I can start threading my loom. Here we are at the back of my loom. <laughs> um, I am currently threading my loom. Um, this yarn is so pretty. Y'all, I, <laughs> I love it. It's just got these lovely tones of green, both warm and cool green, but it does, I think, it rides the line closer to warm but I am loving it. I am about a quarter of the way through, so I have a quarter left over here and then half left over here. And I'm just going one by one as my threading is a pointed twill. So that means that it goes from uh, harness one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, back down, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. And uh, it's really important to just kind of keep track of where you are, that way you don't misthread anything. The chances of me screwing this up are non-zero. <laughs> uh, it is highly likely that I might miss a thread somewhere, and that's fine. It's not going to affect the final fabric a whole lot. Um, but I think so far I'm doing pretty good. So I am going to take a short break because I am currently hunched over on a stool behind my loom and doing this work. And it takes about six minutes to do an inch. <laughs> and I have 26 inches of weaving width across this whole thing. So that is a significant amount. It's, I believe I timed it uh, or... What do you call that? I, what is that word? Cut this out. Um, I projected the time it's gonna take me to finish threading this and it's about two and a half hours. <laughs> so uh, yeah, I am well on my way to getting this fully threaded and then I can just wind it on, which is also kind of a nerve wracking part cause I don't wanna break any threads, but we're getting there. We are getting there. <laughs> 
So yeah, I'm gonna take a little break and then next time you see me, I believe I'll be done threading and onto the winding one. front of the loom now. <laughs> um, everything has been threaded. I had to kind of get rid of the last few ends on each, well actually just on this side. Um, I may have separated my heddles wrong or the math was wrong, but I wasn't able to do like a full repeat of the pattern all the way to the edges. So on each side I have about an inch um, or half an inch of fabric that won't have the regular pattern. But it's all threaded. I have it knotted on to my back apron bar. So now what I can do is I can pull out my leaf sticks, get rid of the chokes, and start winding on my back beam. Uh, I need to grab my plastic here. I use this to separate my warp threads. I don't think I'm gonna have enough for a 14 yard warp. <laughs> so that'll be interesting. Uh, we'll see what I need to do. Uh, I also have some paper and, and stuff, but we'll make do, we'll make do. So I'm gonna go ahead and start winding on. I'll put that on a time lapse here and uh, hopefully I won't break any threads while it's going.
a while since I have filmed on this project because I have just been weaving my butt off on this main suiting fabric. I just wanted to pop in and show you what's on the fabric beam. So we've got a nice decent roll of fabric and um, it's, gosh, it feels amazing. It feels like a proper tweed. Uh, fabric. So this is going to be very nice, very warm. And look at that pattern. Ah, I am loving it. I still have quite a bit of warp, <laughs> um, but we are officially into the plastic. So I think I'm at least uh, past the halfway mark. So yeah, here we are. We're getting there. Good morning from my loom. Uh, <laughs> I am, I just took a few, um, oh, like an hour and a half. Hi, Rowan. Come here. Come on. I took an hour and a half this morning to do some weaving, um, because I was up earlier than I normally am. And, um, well, I have an update for, for this project, the fabric that I'm working on for the vipers in the IV suiting, fantasy suiting project. <clears throat> so, um, I am well over halfway, um, well over halfway with weaving the fabric for this. Um, I'm absolutely loving how the texture is, how the pattern looks, and there's a very large roll of fabric on my fabric beam that's just so pleasing. Um, I have run into a little bit of a snag. Um, so I have been battling with clothing moths <laughs> for many, 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 many months now. And some of them got into my yarn <laughs> for this particular project. Um, particularly the weft yarn that I was using, the charcoal gray, um, or carbon. Um, Erwin, you cannot get into my sweater right now, buddy. So anyways, um, yeah, I started pulling from the cone and it would just like disintegrate in front of my eyes and in my fingers. And uh, the more I pulled, the, the more it would unravel the yarn, like the yarn would just fall apart. So um, and this yarn is a two-ply, so it's already not particularly structurally sound when it comes to, like, if one of those plies fails, the yarn is going to break. So the fact that both plies are failing is not great. Um, if I were a little bit more, like, intense, I would just knot the yarn every time that it broke. Uh, because it's just in the weft, it's not like it's it's not being under tension under uh, in the warp. However, um, that's really annoying and it's a time suck. And at this point, I just want fabric for my project. I'm at the point now where I think I have enough for at least the jacket and maybe the pants, um, and hopefully enough for the vest underneath all of that. But I don't want to waste what's left of the warp on my warp beam because there's actually still a significant amount of warp on the back end of things. So um, I have made the decision to switch to this kind of like cranberry red color. And yes, I know what you're thinking. Uh, Benjamin, your warp is green, and red and green are very Christmassy together. That's true. I'm not gonna fight that. Um, but red and green are opposite each other on the color wheel, so they are complements of each other. And when you blend red and green, you should get like a brown, a neutral color. So I'm hoping there's two things that are gonna happen. Either the contrast between the red and the green is going to create a really vibrant color visually, or because the threads are fine enough, they'll intermingle 
and create more of a neutral color. Um, we'll see. So I'm going to weave the remainder of this warp with this cranberry. I've only wound one pern of this so far. I, I'm going to do a pern of it, see if I like it. If I don't like it, I don't know what I'm going to do because this yarn has been discontinued. <laughs> so, like I cannot get more of this charcoal gray. That's that's where we are. So this project is always about like I'm I'm a big believer in go with the flow. Don't try to fight it. You know, this is a practice. This is an art practice. And if I'm trying to fight the process, then I'm not having a good time and it should be pleasurable. So I'm going to go ahead and weave a bit. Uh, I do need to head off to work shortly, so um, I'm not going to be able to pop in for another clip until probably tomorrow or um, after work tonight, but I'm not going to have great lighting. So any hoosies, um, that's where we are on this part of the project. So we've got a very cozy Rowan right now. <laughs> Is this the face of a troublemaker? Yeah, it is. All right, buddy. I've got more weaving to do, so I need you to get off my lap. See y'all in the next clip. Ooh wee! Look at this. I've got the fabric here. It's pretty much done. Um, I still have like a yard of warp left, but. I'm just gonna go ahead and cut it off. I found something really weird. I somehow twisted the thread around the settle and it didn't give me any problems during the entire weaving process. But I can't believe I did that. Um, but yeah, between all of the broken warp threads that I fixed and uh, having to switch to red in my weft yarn, um, I just figure I'm done. I'm going to cut this off. I'm going to get the fabric off of the loom and I'm just going to be done. And uh, I am going to wash the fabric. So that will happen um, probably, well, I might try it tonight. Uh, my drying rack is not uh, clear. So I need to dry or clear that off first. But yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and cut this off my loom and then I'm done with it basically and I can move on to the rest of this project. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and cut this off and uh, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna let you watch that. All right, we're gonna cut this off the loom. <laughs> we're gonna hear some fun things falling to the back of the loom. disengage the brake and what I'm going to do here is actually wow. okay I'm already in love um, I am just going to fold this over on one of my other reeds and I am Trapping that here with my leaf stick. Okay, come on. I'm also going to remove the pins as I go. So here we are back at the fabric, um, the actual 
proper color fabric. Oh my gosh, this is gonna be so pretty when it's washed. I mean, it's already really pretty. <laughs> I almost can't believe that I made this. <laughs> and, um, wow, I, I don't have the words. I've been working on this for the last two months and it's finally coming off the loom. That's wild to me. Uh, <laughs> All right, uh, and I'm just gonna go ahead and cut this waste fabric off. <laughs> wow, look at this. I have a bolt of fabric that I wove. Here it is. Vipers in the Ivy fabric. And I'm gonna go ahead and pull out the reed. Here we are. <sighs> wow. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and wash this, lay it out to dry. And uh, let's see, let's move this up. You can see my naked face. Oh, um, I'm gonna go ahead and wash this, get it all pulled together and then we're going to move on to the next portion of the series. So thank you so much for watching episode three of the Vipers in the Ivy Fantasy Suiting Project, uh, weaving the main suit fabric. And I hope you'll join me for the next one. Um, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button. If you want to stay up to date on this project, please consider looking at the playlist for this project, the Vipers and the Ivy Fantasy Suiting Project. Um, how many times can I say project in one <laughs> little brief moment? So thank you all so much for watching. Stay happy, stay healthy, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.